in light of it being November 5th, which is a significant day within the world, really, within the United States. It is the election day. It is the day of change. It is the day of intensity, of conflict, of decision, of choice, and of new, of a period of reborn, of redirection, of a pivot, potentially, or not, but in this case, yes. And so there are infinite potentials and infinite realities right now. And then there is this layer of a shared reality within this reality. There are many, many, many layers to it. And so in this shared reality, we will all witness what comes of this. And there will be another dimension where it might be a different answer. And so whatever happens today and in the next year, two years, three years, four years, and so on, there will of course be moments of change, moments of fear, moments of uncertainty. On an individual level, when we face uncertainty, our subconscious freaks out. And it tells us that, you know, this is unsafe. It gives us all these scenarios, all these thoughts, all these beliefs, all these physical manifestations of reasons why we should avoid this potentially unsafe thing. The subconscious does not want you happy, it wants you safe. We seek pleasure and not pain. And so as a society, it is the same thing. We are trying so hard to avoid this unfamiliar, to avoid this unsafety. And we often trust what we're being told to a certain extent. We'll find something that feels safe. And oftentimes based off of our programming, and our primal essence, like at a deep level, we are primal beings and we wish to be in community and accepted by the tribe in order to survive. And so you might be influenced by the people that you're around, by the sources of information that you seek or that you receive, by the comments that you fill your mind with, that you have shifted your focus to, those all have the potential to influence you. And if you don't have this awareness around your instinct to wish to be accepted by others, you can often fall into this, okay, I just trust this, this information right here. And then that can become fact to you. And then that will become your beliefs and your foundations and your stance. And this is how it has to be right? Being a free thinker, thinking outside the box, being open-minded means facing those parts of yourself that tell you that you have to be accepted by others and so you have to think the same things or that you have to become one of them in order to survive. You know that in this day and age, you don't have to follow the norm, right? And you can challenge the parts of yourself that maybe find worth or uh, <laughs> validation through your stances. I went down that path of uh, veganism for a while when I first went on my health journey, spiritual journey 10 years ago. And I truly love animals more than anything in the world. It's like, it's since I was a kid, that's what I came to earth. I was like, I know something is like, my life is about animals in some way. And so when I discovered veganism and found all this passion of what was like going on in that vegan world, I was like, yes. And then I did the thing, everyone else is wrong. We're right. Yeah, you suck, we're good. Virtue signaling. You know, I was finding a lot of worth and validation through my choices and finding a bit of superiorness to superiority to others because I was doing the the highest thing, the best thing, the most um, 
ethical thing. And, and so we go down these paths without even realizing our brain is telling us that we're doing the right thing, that we are the better person and that we know the most. But at the root level, it's like there are so many realities of what is the best thing, of what is the right thing. The more that I learned about diet, or just using this as an example, but it goes so far. The more that I learned about diet, study nutrition, had my health journey, I went down every avenue of dietary theory. You know, I was looking at veganism and then I was looking at like Chinese uh, body types and diets for that and then the blood type diet and then I was looking at all the macros and then I was looking at keto and paleo and all these different things and I was gluten-free dairy-free sugar-free soy-free nightshade free I was I was doing it all to the point where there was nothing left to eat like literally nothing that was like the common denominator of safe within all diets of you know of low histamine diet and of uh anti-inflammatory diet and uh, low lectin and low, um, what is the other one? All these things that I was trying to follow in order to like, do the right thing for my body. And then I realized that everyone, every single diet has these advocates online within books all over the world saying, this is the way this diet is what will cure the world everyone should follow this diet <laughs> and then I would try the diet I'm like what the fuck it doesn't work for me <laughs> and so I realized I was like there's so many truths everyone's intentions with this is good because it worked for them because it felt in resonance for them but your truth can be different your truth is none of this every belief is not the truth the truth is this infiniteness, expansiveness, no wordsness. There's nothing to describe it. Everything that we're describing is made up. We're trying to create systems through describing, through believing. And so when you can just get into the acceptance of it all, accepting each candidate, accepting each diet, accepting each person that promotes each thing, accepting all that is, losing the attachment and the charge behind it, then we can flow to a place where we're moving into more of the truth. We're moving to the next way of living here on earth where it's just a little bit easier. But when you latch on and I'm like, what my, my experience with my health would have been so much worse if I was like, screw this person for promoting this and screw this doctor for saying this and screw this. Like, no, I just had to like, okay, okay, okay. This and this and this and this. And you're going to be guided to what's meant to be. The world is going to be guided to what's meant to be. It starts on an individual level. That's how we change the world. That's how we shift into this new way of being here on earth. If you want to make a difference, start with yourself. Start with how you are perceiving what's going on. Do not fall into fear. Do not fall into, you know, identification with belief. Do not fall into this person's wrong and I'm right and they're right and they're wrong and they're good and they're bad. None of it's real. None of it's real. The best thing that you can do is send love and acceptance to all that is and trust that everything will happen the way that it is meant to without attachment. If you can face your deepest, darkest fear and say, what if this happens and get to the place of being like, it, well, if it's meant to happen, it will happen. If that's God's will, then sure. Okay. I trust it. I let go. It's the same thing in the world. If we're meant to go into massive world war, if we're meant to go into another pandemic, if we're meant to go into all these things, into this, this one world order, then so be it. We will face that when the time comes. And you're not going to win if you fight fire with fire. You will make the most difference when you stay in your soul sovereignty, unfazed, uninfluenced, and no one can affect your essence. 
follow your joy, follow your curiosity, move through the weeds of illusion within your being, within yourself, within your mind, within your thoughts, within your beliefs. Recognize all these things that have been boxing you in, that have been making you feel like you are separate. The biggest illusion is that you are separate, that you are separate from source. We are in this phase of divide and conquer, which allows others to be controlled, which allows the world to be controlled. Do not let yourself be divided. There is no such thing as division. When you start to see that we are all one infinite consciousness, you start to see that you are one with the consciousness, then there is no such thing as separate. There is no such thing as separate between the two parties, between the two candidates, between the two versions of you that are conflicting between a decision. All is from the one source. So when you lean into that and let go of attachment and just let it be and find your awareness because you are the awareness, everything will play out in the way that it is meant to. You do not have to do this alone. The world does not have to do this alone. There is a solution. We will be guided there with much less conflict if we can trust that inner wisdom. And we can decondition our mind to remember that inner wisdom, to remember how much potential and how limitless we really are. And that all those callings that you have in your life, all those big dreams, they're possible for you. And when you decondition your mind, you will arrive in that timeline and it will make the world a better place. The world will look so much different the next few years, the next few decades, and so on and so on. Many people will really start to challenge their mind and decondition their mind and make it their job to do this and dedicate everything that they have to doing this the most important thing, the most, how do I say this? The most influential thing on your perceived reality will be to decondition your mind. Period. When you do that, then you start walking through your life in reality much easier. You start seeing everything else outside of you as a direct reflection of what's within you and you start seeing that all of this conflict is going on within yourself and when you can re let go of resistance and let go of conditioning and rewire the patterns and the neurons that are fired together everything in your perceived reality will shift therefore the world will shift therefore everyone's world will, sh will shift so let it be here decondition your mind rewire your mind challenge everything that is limiting you and all will be well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new here. Leave a comment if you feel called to do so. If you don't know what to say, you can say, hello, Arlo. You can say Arlo for president. <laughs> and if you want to sign up for one of my programs, I have 21 days to rewire your mind, 21 days to know your divine guidance. And I have my newest program starting on January 1st to start the new year in a way that you never have before, in a way that will set up your life to, you know, do exactly what we just talked about in this video. It is everything that I've ever gathered in my human experience, and it will take you on a journey that will allow you to step into the newest timeline, the new timeline where you are in your highest potential and you don't even recognize the person who signed up. So that's available. Uh, you can sign up now for the pre-sale and you can sign up for my emails. I have a new website, so you can go there. I'll link it below. Follow me on Instagram, Araya Amenti. And one-on-ones as well, if you'd like to. So I will see you guys in tomorrow's video.